All right, so we're back to the course dashboard now, and what we're imagining is that all the students have created their piece, and then they're going to come back in. Normally, of course, there would just be one activity bar, and, and the assess would be lit up in this one. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is just sneak down to this one here uh, that will allow me to demonstrate the assess phase. So let's log right back in here. This is where a lot of the, the real powerful pedagogy starts to, to kick in. Um, so what we're telling students here, and, and by the way, these instructions are, are generated by us, modifiable by the, by the instructor, but they need not be modified. Basically, what we're asking students to do here is take on the role of the teacher. And that in and of itself, we know, is great for the community of the classroom and allows them to better understand what a teacher does. But also, um, when they engage in this assessment of the work of their peers, that's really pushing them to, to think critically, uh, to try to understand each piece of work, and to ultimately voice their thoughts in what we call uh, expressive communication to present their ideas to others. So once again where they would begin is just reading through the instructions and perhaps um, they may want to um, make get that rubric active again. I didn't I thought it didn't miss my click but that allows them just to have it open in a window. Then they could just minimize the instructions and get on to the task at hand. And so here is the task at hand. Uh, in this case what I've set the system up to do is to um, randomly select and anonymously present the work from three of their peers. So before we go too far, if you just kind of look over here, you will see here's the composition from peer one, composition from peer two, composition from peer three. So they can look at all those. They can also look at their own work, by the way. It's there anytime, so this is what they submitted. But their real task is to go through each peer composition and provide feedback uh, to these peers. And, and there's a couple of ways they can do that. One is in a very co context embedded way. So they can choose something, um, they can, uh, so maybe here, research I found, they might want to say this is too informal. Um, try to keep it third person. for example, uh, and they can make a number of those lower level comments here, things about sentence structure and grammar and maybe how people are citing papers, etc. They can make those comments right in the paper itself. Um, and you know that can make it easy for the student to, to understand exactly what they're speaking of. But in addition, they are expected to do a higher level assessment um, this assessment can be created by the instructor and what you'll notice is what I've done is kind of mimic this rubric. When you looked at the rubric it said okay I'm gonna make this purpose worth 40 percent, elaboration worth 40, and editing worth 20. Um, what I've done is make purpose worth 8, evidence worth 8, and editing worth four, so that just allows them a little more precision um, for, for saying where they're at, but they could essentially read this, consult the rubric, and when it comes to statement of purpose, they could say, okay, let me look, it was, the, was the claim clearly stated, focused and strongly maintained, etc." So this gives them a real clear sense of, of what they should be looking for in this piece, and then ultimately they would indicate, okay, I think this was a six out of eight on that, and I think when it came to evidence and elaboration, maybe a five, and maybe the editing conventions were a three. So, so far we're pretty rubric based. Um, and that's good because that really gets them uh, consulting the rubric itself, which is itself a very strong learning instrument. Uh, a lot of evidence shows that uh, proper use of rubrics can really help students themselves as they think about writing. But then this is the kind of other interesting stuff. And again, the instructor can create this however they want. The way I've created this is to follow what some people call the wish and hug approach. Um, the wish is the constructive feedback part. Uh, and so as, as, I, I've, as I've said it here, I say of all the things this student might change, what is the one thing that you think they could change to produce the biggest improvement in their work? And I also say don't just highlight that current weakness, but also give the peer some clear ideas on how they can fix it. So this is where this peer has to provide their constructive feedback. Uh, and critically, 
um, that feedback is considered part of the assignment. So you're going to be graded on your feedback, the quality of your feedback, uh, in addition to that original thing that you wrote. Uh, this is the hug, um, just pointing out something good about what was done, nice way to end an assessment on a positive note, um, and, and to reinforce whatever the student's doing well. So this is how I've chosen to create the assessment, and, and the student would now go through and do that for all three peers, ultimately saving uh, their work at the end when they do all three, and once they've saved the work for all three peers, then they can be asked, and we would argue should be asked, to assess their own work in the same way. So they could be suggested, you know, go look at that rubric now, but look at your own work. How well did you think you did these things? And there's a lot of evidence to suggest that once students are already in that critical mindset, they're better prepared to look at their own strengths and weaknesses, to develop their metacognitive abilities uh, of seeing their own work in that detached way. So that's what we're trying to encourage here. Um, so before I leave this phase, I want to point out you know, the really high level point here. Um, and, and there's really two of them. So one of them is what we're doing here is giving our students repeated structured practice with things like critically thinking. So they start with peer one and they think critically about all the ways it could be better and should I suggest this or should I suggest that? And then they ultimately take that idea and express it as a constructive comment. So they're learning to think critically, to read critically, which is what we call receptive communication, uh, and then to voice their idea in a constructive comment that is the expressive communication going on. And they don't just do that once, they do that for peer two, they do that for peer three, they can do it for as many peers as the instructor wants, and then they turn that all on themselves, um, which is a difficult thing for us to do, to, to analyze our work that way. So it's really giving you know, a lot of repeated structured practice, and that's how these skills developed. The other thing that I'd like to point out is that what students are also experiencing as they do this are the work of peers on the same project they did. Some of the peer work is stronger than theirs, some is weaker than theirs, so they're getting a really good sense of where their work, where the quality of their work fits. Uh, I like to say it this way, it's one thing for an instructor to tell you you're an average student, that, or at least that you're producing average work. It's something else for you to come to that realization on your own, to look at the work of peers and to think, wow, I, I could be doing better. When you come to that conclusion, then you own it more, uh, and, you're, and you're more likely to actually do something about it, um, to find ways to make your work better. And of course, we're showing you ways. Uh, you can see some of the students who might be doing it better, so you see some explicit examples. So that's why you know, so many people are so excited about peer assessment, because it really harnesses the, this power and puts it in the hands of the student to kind of direct their own learning um, and to learn a lot of, about themselves in the process. All right, so that's step three. Me, as a student, I've just assessed three peers. Now, of course, while I've been doing that, they've been assessing me, and that takes us to the next step.